stretch towards the resumption of conference play. Four games left before conference play begins again. We have to ask the question, number two in the country, just how good are these Spartans? Look, this is an incredible basketball team, and the ceiling is still high, and I don't think they've gotten even close. And Tom Izzo would agree, but the biggest issue is finding a way to improve every night out, regardless of who you're playing, regardless of the name on your opponent's jersey. Well, that's what they're trying to do tonight, going against an HBU team that is certainly trying to get this thing going a little bit, but the youth of this Michigan State squad is going to be on display tonight. You look at that starting lineup. Four sophomores and a freshman. But in this day and age of college basketball at this level, that's almost a veteran group. All these guys have seen some significant minutes, save Jaron Jackson, who's about to play his 12th game. But all five of those youngsters averaging double figures. I was going to say, shoot, what are you talking about? Sophomores are veterans. I don't care how old these guys are. They don't have a ton of college basketball under their belt. They're incredibly talented. The ceiling is high. But again, what makes you a champion is knowing how to play at your best. And that's what some youth and inexperience can, can cause. HBU at four and seven. Michigan State at 10 and one. Spartans coming off a grinded out win over Oakland, 86-73 over the weekend. And the tip tossed out of bounds. It'll go towards Michigan State. One of the challenges, uh, Tom Izzo said before the game, said, look, we, we've got to play the game, not the name of the jersey on the opponents. And I think it's a great point, especially with a young team who you're trying to maximize the potential of. A potential that is incredibly high. We're talking Final Four caliber. Winston the lob underneath and Bridges. 100% healthy Miles Bridges elevates for the two-hand start. I don't think anybody that's not a Michigan State fan wants to hear that. Because when he's 100% healthy and when he turns it on, he gets angry. He's unstoppable. You wouldn't like him when he's angry? I do. I'm a fan of basketball. <laughs> So foul going the other way against HBU. That'll be on Edwin Hart, his first. I'm also kind of an elitist. I like to see the best teams play really well, and Michigan State happens to be one of the best teams in the country. They share the basketball very well. As the season progresses, they're going to execute even better as they go on. That's tipped away by Braxton Bonds, and Bonds has it poked away and lost it out of bounds. So Bonds gets the steal, then turns it back over to Michigan State. Back on offense. Yeah, those are, one of, those are some of the things that they've got to clean up. I mean, taking care of the basketball, I think at times you've got to make simple plays and simple passes, good, crisp passes. And that's what made them a champion in 2000. They, they had a bunch of seniors. They had a bunch of experienced players who understood how to move, how to pass the basketball. Second Michigan State turnover as Will Gates Jr. comes up with the steal. They push to Braxton Bonds. The floater not going to go, and Jackson the rebound. But then Jackson throws it away, and the foul. David Carraher going to go to the line after the turnover, and Tom Izzo, that last turnover, got him off the bench to talk with his team. Three consecutive turnovers, and that'll certainly get the head coach up. Well, I think what he's talking about, he, he's trying to get Miles Bridges to post up, hold his seal. He didn't hold his seal well enough, and it wasn't a great angle. But I think if, if you've got the physicality of Miles Bridges, you want to create opportunities for him to get one-on-one -on -one ISO situations, and that was one. And that's a situation that he's going to win nine out of ten times if he can get the ball. Line right now for HBU. Player to keep your eyes on tonight. 15.2 points per game. He's just a true freshman. We talked about the youth of Michigan State, but Carragher once committed to Butler. Wanted to go somewhere where he would play a lot right away. Ended up at HBU and has played a lot right away. And Carragher double doubles in each of his last two games. I like that concept. I really do. I like the concept of the guy who said, I want to play the game. Ian Dubose with a steal. Dubose motoring to the other end. To the rim. Can't get the roll. And the rebound tip to Jaron Jackson. Michigan State trying to push. Cassius Winston in the corner. Bridges open for three. That's not going to go. The rebound tipped around. There's Ward, and Ward finishes with a flourish. And a timeout is going to be taken by Michigan State. Just a minute and a half into this one, Tom Izzo wants to talk things over. And you're going to be happy to get offensive rebounds. This is a department they should dominate. It pretty much dominate everybody in the country in this department. But the key is going to be taking care of the basketball. As I said, a kind of a sloppy start. And these are the times when a coach will go crazy. Look, we've had some good practice, Tom Izzo said. We've had some really good practices. But 
we've got to get to a point where we play and we practice with a sense of urgency. We come with a sense of urgency as if we're playing Duke, as if we're playing Purdue. Whoever the best team out there is, that's who we got to think that we're playing. We're not playing against a team that doesn't have a big name on their jersey. Five possessions, two dunks, three turnovers for Michigan State. Well, he said they've had some good practices. For Tom Izzo, they've not had enough time yeah. in the gym to practice, and that's something he's going to be able to remedy over the next couple of weeks. Well, and it's interesting. I think you start to look at your schedule, how you schedule games in the future, and you go back to back to back with some really tough games, and then you have one or two days in between some of these other games. It's, that's a challenge, because there's a lot of things that you need to improve upon to get you ready for conference play. Tree pass down low. Hart trying to work against Nick Ward. Nowhere to go. A little frustrated as he tossed that one back out. Eight to shoot. Dubose will put it on the deck. The floater from the elbow. No good. Rebound tipped out by Ward. Carraher able to save it to Bonds. Bonds dumps it down low. Hart shot not going to go. Jackson throws it away. The intercept by Dubose. And HBU with another offensive opportunity down a pair. People talking about this end of, end of season situation with, with the Big Ten tournament being a week early and how, oh, well, it's going to be great. They get a few extra practices, in, and then it's not the same as the practices that you're going to get in November and December. Bonds flying in, tossing that one off Jackson, and the effort level for HBU right now is what you would expect for a team that's playing essentially the best team they've ever played. This is the highest-ranked opponent in HBU history. Yeah, and it's also why you see Tum Tum there coming into the game. Tom Izzo wants to find out who's going to come out here and compete at a high level. I mean, Michigan State's incredible. The ceiling, again, is incredibly high. It doesn't mean they can't be beat. Miles' shot won't go. Bonds hustling in there to try to bat it away. Bridge is able to secure it. Braxton Bonds, incidentally, the nephew of Barry Bonds. As Ward misses that one down low and a foul on Tim Miles. And I think so far in the Big Ten this year that we've had some reminders that anyone can beat anyone. I mean, Rutgers playing Michigan State as well as I've ever seen Rutgers play Michigan State. Minnesota losing at Nebraska. Anybody can beat anybody in this conference. Ben Carter getting some early minutes, and Carter on the drive is fouled. Will Gates Jr. with the foul, his first 13th foul on HBU. It's also important to note that if you don't play with a sense of urgency every single night out, you don't practice with a sense of urgency, you're really limiting your potential. Uh, you're not going to improve the way that you need to improve, especially if this team wants to be a Final Four contender. One more for Carter. That being said, don't tell him I said this, no. but... They could probably still go to the Final Four and not improve any bit from where they're at right now. I mean, they have that much talent and that much depth. Well, put it right now and mention that John Crispin believes that the season should just end right now. Michigan State's in the Final Four. I'm not saying they could. I'm saying they could. Oh, oh. oh, it's Twitter. I can just quote you. Sure. Tim Miles back up top, making the three. Got Ward in the air, and now Gates on the run. The scoop by Gates and Holmes. lead for Michigan State, trying to grow it to four. Ward with the rebound, going back to work with a left hand. And Nick Ward, a double-double on Saturday against Oakland, 15-15, and 15, and now a turnover by HBU as Carraher lobbed it to DuBose, well, who Nick, wasn't looking. Nick Ward's one of those guys that Coach Izzo's had to get after. He really did. He had to get after him, but again, I, I, he cares enough to push these guys. It, it's not just pushing them because you're not happy with them. It's pushing them because you know how much better they can be. Ward has responded to that. It came in the Rutgers game, and there was a lot of talk about Tom Izzo being unhappy with Nick Ward. Nick Ward responded to Coach Izzo, and saw a little bit of that on Saturday with Cassius Winston after a rough first half. Let me put it this way, and I take this for what it is. Nick Ward didn't grow last year as much as people may have think, thought. He played a lot. But, but he wasn't challenged. He didn't have to persevere because he wasn't pushed. He wasn't pushed as much in practice, but he wasn't pushed for playing time in the game because they just didn't have the options because of injuries. Bridges with the three. Miles Bridges inside and out to get his five early points. That's a part of his game where it has really evolved. And as he shoots the basketball better, this team just, again, the ceiling just continues to rise. Caraher with Nairn right on top of him. 
Shu Kuka immediately off the bench, the 6'7 junior. As Dubose with six to shoot. And out of Bonds with four on the shot clock. Gonna have to launch. Carraher with one to shoot. Did he get the shot up? No, he did not. It's a shot clock violation. Defense again for Michigan State. And a timeout here in Storm to help clean up, tearing out drywall carpet, just doing anything they can to help the community as a whole. And HBU really showing their stuff. There's a lot of young kids on this team that had never really been to Houston before, coming from all parts of the country. And when the hurricane hit, they immediately pitched in to help their new hometown. Winston with the quick three, back on the floor, and delivers quickly 13 to four, Michigan State. Kevin, teams out there, and you know, NCAA teams out here, they do a lot within the communities with which they reside. But this is on a whole nother level. When, when you come together as a community through tragedy, through disaster like this, uh, a lot of perspective gained from some of these young guys, especially ones who hadn't even gone to class yet. And they're already chipping in to help this community. Bonds on the drive with a shot clock winding down, and Braxton Bonds showing some speed with the ball in his hand. Well, if you allow a guy to turn the corner, these are all Division I athletes. You know, if you allow a guy to turn the corner, they have the potential to make plays. Here's Carter on the baseline, left that one short. Bonds with a rebound. Triple double on Friday for Bonds. 16 points, 12 assists, 10 rebounds. I think that's one of the toughest plays to cover in college basketball. Maybe the second toughest. I think flare screens are really hard. Flare screen, read screen situations in college are tough to cover, but the transition ball screen, you gotta be set, you gotta be in position. It's not an easy cover. Nice work by Carter to come in there and get the block. Carter with some decent minutes as Jaron Jackson checks in. Cottrell in his 27th season at the helm of HBU. They were founded in 1960 out of the Southland Conference. Now, this was an NAIA team. As the shot clock winds down and Dubose's jumper a little bit strong, rebound to Cassius Winston. In 2007-2008, they jumped from NAIA to Division I. A four-year transition period to get up to Division I level. That's a giant leap for any program and still trying to get themselves fully established. They are by now, but boy, it takes a while when you go that big a step from NAIA to Division I. Well, you're also kind of trying to get established in perception as well as, as being a Division I program to attract talent, to get guys to play. I mean, especially when you look at the importance of transfers to a lot of these smaller schools. If you can get transfers, especially local kids that have gone away, maybe haven't gotten the playing time that they want, we talked about before, just wanting to come play the game and be on the floor as much as possible. But you gotta have the perception of being a Division I contender. Wade with the foul. Ian Dubose, one of those freshmen that came in right before the hurricane and was asked to pitch in from Durham, North Carolina, Raleigh, Durham area. 71% at the line, one more to come for Ian Dubose. Subscribe now to BTN Plus. Gain access to hundreds of non-televised games, including men's basketball and passes starting at $9.95 a month. See your school in action and never miss a moment of the excitement. Get BTN Plus available on BTN to go. Some good games this week on BTN Plus. Back here at Michigan State on Thursday, Long Beach State and Michigan State. Cash is Winston and a whistle and a foul going the other way. The screen on Jaron Jackson. It will cost Michigan State the possession. That's such a tough one. I mean, they're, they're really looking to call that cleaning things up in terms of those ball screens, even dribble handoffs. It is so hard to do a dribble handoff and not foul the guy. It really is because you've got to be set if you're going to make any contact at all. It's the right call, especially because you're trying to take some of the advantage away from the defense with the freedom, freedom of movement. It's the right call, but it doesn't make it any easier to stomach Ooh. if it's against you. As Bonds has that one knocked away. Jackson able to chase it down. Winston up ahead to Schilling. Schilling the leaner falls. And he'll go to the line. You gotta watch the eyes of Cassius Winston. I mean, he sees everything, but you have no idea where he's really looking. I mean, the whole time, he knows exactly who's gonna be open. He understands that Gavin Schilling's gonna be open. He's looking off. Miles Bridges is in the corner. He makes it look as if he's going there, but Find Schilling for an open layup. Goins in. Joshua Langford checks out. First time we've seen Goins tonight. 
interesting talking to Tom Mizzo, too. I mean, it's just a different team. He's got a bunch of just intellectual kids, smart kids who, who really are into their education. They're, they're smart kids, which means you got to you kind of got to motivate them differently, and I think that's been a little bit of a challenge. They're still young, so you got to you got to realize how they perceive or receive information and motivate them that way. And it's a challenge too because they're smart enough to know just how good they are and how good they can <laughs> be a, too, which is a problem sometimes. It's almost hurt. better when they don't. Know. Right, exactly. <laughs> Oblivious to everything. Caraher with ten on the shot clock. Obviously a big target of Michigan State's defensive efforts. Carraher trying to work against Jackson. That's a tough matchup. Hart inside with the offensive rebound and the putback. Yep, Gavin might just got shoved under the basket. Although I don't feel too badly for him. If anybody can shove Gavin Schilling, you should get a point for that. Because he's big. He's I a big was, guy. I've sure. sure. looked in the rule book. There's no Schilling rule to my knowledge. If I made the rules up, they'd clearly all be in my favor. They'd all be in the offense's favor. Shooters named Crispin get five extra points per shot. <laughs> Winston, the lob to Schilling. And Schilling with the flush. Nobody's shoving him there. Uh, if you get offensive rebounds, it's almost a guarantee Michigan State's going to get a basket. Whether it's close to the rim or a long rebound like that, the defense out of position leads to an open opportunity for Michigan State. Third dunk already for the Spartans up 10. And a foul underneath. Schilling battling down low with Edward Hart. Check out the State Farm assist of the game, John Crispin. Well, it's all Cassius Winston and his vision. I mean, he knows where he's going. He knows uh, who's going to be wide open. Again, second chance opportunities is where Michigan State can kill you the most. And they got all the weapons in the world. Pretty easy find. Our State Farm assist of the game. Cassius Winston to Gavin Schilling. Michigan State up. Michigan State with a 20 to 10 lead over HBU. Kevin Kugler alongside John Crispin back at the Breslin Center. Huskies with the basketball. Philip McKenzie to Jalen Gates, the brother of Will Gates Jr. Mitch Daniels finds Jalen Gates again. Gates going around Langford getting to the rim. Jalen Gates. A lob on the other end. in this arena is up on their feet excited except one man it's Tom Izzo and understandably so as great as the highlight is it came off of a breakdown defensively uh, they can overcome a lot of problems they really can this team they can do this after a made basket they get the ball up so quickly and it leads to a wide open lob dunk but I know out of a timeout there's nothing Tom Izzo wants to see more than a great defensive play it's just classic. I mean, I do enough of these games that I don't even look at the highlight anymore. I always want to see how coaches are reacting. <laughs> because he understands. He understands what it takes to win at a high level. He understands what it takes to win a Big Ten championship, a Big Ten tournament championship, and get to a Final Four. Because once you get to a Final Four, anything can happen. Really, anybody can end up winning. you got to get there first and foremost. And he understands what it takes. And you can't have those defensive breakdowns that lead to a layup. Haley got his own rebound. Do both three won't go. Tip try not going to go for McKenzie. McKenzie had it blocked inside by Goins. Stay with the Huskies. 11.07 remaining in this first half and a 23-12 Michigan State lead. I don't think there's any problem with today's players getting them to believe in themselves. I think launch. Gates is fouled by Langford. Three free throws coming for Jalen Gates. I, I think the biggest challenge is getting them to believe in the work it takes to get to that level. Uh, that's going to be the biggest challenge for Tom Izzo. We all know the, the potential of this team, the ceiling of this team, and certainly this guy, Tom Izzo, knows. Get the sense when we've talked to him over the course of the early stages of this season that he shies away from letting his kids know, hey, I think you can be really, really good at the yeah. end of the year. 
And he's not going to, he said he's not going to lie to him. <laughs> you, can't, well, you, you can't. I don't think you can anymore. I mean, because of social media and I don't know, I don't understand because I know social media can be rough, but when you're that good, people out there are going to remind you how good you are. And Tom Izzo's got that challenge. I mean, you look at this and I'm 2000 national championship. Seven Final Four appearances. At one point, every every senior that played for him went to a Final Four. And I know that's what he wants, and there's a reason why seniors end up going to the Final Four, because he's molded them for four years, sometimes five years. Tillman inside, left-handed hook, this talented freshman is only going to grow into a bigger, bigger role with this yeah, Michigan State I, I team. I really like him. I really like Tillman on the floor. And I, also, one of the reasons why I like him the most is he's going to push Nick Ward. Nick Ward's only going to be as good as the competition that he's got in practice, because in a game, the balance that this team has, they're a great basketball team, but he needs to be pushed to practice you go back to A.J. Hammonds and Isaac Haas. A.J. Hammonds started until Isaac Haas started to really play well. They put Isaac Haas in the game and next thing you know A.J. Hammonds turns into a pro. Competition's the greatest motivator in sports. Spartans get a rebound. HBU already with eight offensive rebounds in this first half. They're third in the country in offensive rebounding coming in almost 16 per game. That's not a fluke. They were 10th in the country a year ago. Bridges, open three. Won't go. Langford with the follow. Tillman can't get it to go. And DuBose picks up the loose ball. Langford able to grab that rebound and found Tillman. Just couldn't finish that one. Ten-point lead for Michigan State. Fifteen to shoot. Three and DuBose. DuBose on the drive. Bridges rips the rebound away. Ahead to Nairn. Nairn on the push to Langford. Langford the pull-up two. It's an air ball caught by Emili. It's not an easy shot, but I like that shot. Especially from Joshua Langford. Jump shooters may get the best look in transition. As the defense is retreating, as they're back on their heels, that pull-up jumper might be the best one you get all 30 seconds. Well, Langford's had the hot hand to play, too. Almost 15 points a game over the last six. As Nairn on his way to the bucket had that one poked from behind. It'll go out of bounds. Last touch by the Spartans, and it goes back to HBU. Tomorrow on BTN, starting at 7 Eastern, catch another great hoops doubleheader beginning with Ohio State against the Citadel. Then Iowa takes on Southern Utah. It's all tomorrow right here on BTN, streaming live on BTN to go and Fox Sports Go. Hawkeyes off a good win against Drake, Tyler Cook, Jordan Bohan, and Isaiah Moss trying to get that Iowa program going in the right direction. A rugged start and an up and down start for Fran McCaffrey's squad. Hey man, that team needs to find their mojo again. Uh, that's, last year they had it, and maybe part of that was due to Peter Jackson. See the offensive foul drawn by Tum Tum Bear. That seems to be what he does for this team. Peter Jock probably brought a little bit of that to the team. He made a lot of tough shots, and a lot of the key core, the core guys were freshmen, and sometimes not knowing anything as freshman makes you tough. Uh, I think it's been a bit of an issue. They just don't have that same swagger that they had last year. and They don't have the alpha yet. Doesn't mean they can't figure it out. The potential's there. Two freshmen. Marzi, goodness gracious. That could be really good. Bridges with the step back. That one wow. falls home. The two for Bridges puts him into double figures with ten. Quick push ahead, Gates with a three, and Jalen Gates snaps an O for six string with that three. Maybe the Hawkeyes will talk about them and will be motivated by the fact that John Crispin put up dead last in his Big Ten power rankings this week. Thanks for that, Kevin. Because Ward, and all your mean tweets, dude. <laughs> Kevin Cooper. Ward will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. I don't think it's any surprise. When you look at Rutgers, when you look, Rutgers beat Seton Hall. We had that game. You know, you look at what Nebraska's done. Obviously, there's no question as to where this Michigan State team is going to be. They're going to be at the top. It's tough. I mean, that's a tough exercise to do power rankings every week. When what I had in week one compared to where things are going to be just makes me look like a fool, first off. But I'll be here to point it out. I'm not a fortune teller. Just have perspective on things. <laughs> doesn't mean it's right it just, but in terms of Iowa they've probably been playing the least inspiring basketball I've seen Nebraska different story Rutgers totally different story Indiana beats Notre Dame they've played a really tough schedule uh, Wisconsin's really <laughs> struggling so they've slid down quite a bit as well largest lead of the night for Michigan State at 12 
That's Ian Dubose. Working around Langford. Now working on Bridges. Gates pulls the trigger on the three. And Gates back to back threes. And the younger of the Gates brothers for HBU with six quick points. Seems to be how it goes when you play a team like Michigan State. Miles Bridges lines one up. Why not? What they call that an answer. 13 for Bridges in this first call half. Call that an answer, yes. You know you're going to get the best from everybody. You come in here to the Breslin Center, you've got nothing to lose. I don't care if you're 10th in the country. You've got nothing to lose. You might as well go play hard. Those are the things that are going to drive Tom Izzo nuts. Turning the corner, getting a layup, no one on the backside. But even if there's no help in that position, you've got to win your battle. You cannot lose your battle against HBU. Langford rains down the three. His first make from behind the arc. Now Michigan State four for eight from three-point line. Yeah, that's not going to be the issue. This is a team that's got so many weapons, so, so much balance. You can play inside out. You can play outside in. You're great in transition. The key is getting stops. Gates doing some work there. With seven to shoot now, Bonds going back to work. Bonds with four on the shot clock. The shovel inside to McKenzie, rejected by Ward. McKenzie able to get it back, can't get it to go, but the tip from Carraher. Carraher had 19 points and seven rebounds earlier this year against Providence. This is the fourth Power Five school that HBU has played. They're 0 for 3 against Providence, Virginia Tech and Oklahoma State, but John Crispin, HBU trying to hang around. Look, you know you're going to get the best from your opponent if you're Michigan State playing at the Breslin Center. These guys want to come in. They have something to prove as well. You can play fearlessly. Just continue to attack. Got nothing to lose. Still down 11. It's a team that gets out. They share the basketball very well. Draw defense, find each other very well. And gosh almighty, Miles Bridges. Just throw it up to the rim. That's why that's our best pro shots in the net. It was an easy one. 13 points, a couple of rebounds. Michigan State 11 assists on 14 made buckets so far. There's no question this team can score. I, I think shooting the basketball could be an issue at times. But ultimately, it's going to come down to how well they defend. And not just how well, but whether they want to. Because if they want to, if they communicate very well, if they point and call everybody out in transition, this is a legitimate Final Four contender. Ten on the shot clock for DuBose. Braxton Bonds with five to shoot for Gates. Gates goes past McQuaid, gets to the rim, can't get it to go, and McQuaid there for the rebound. Up ahead to Winston. Winston on the attack, has to back it out. Langford on the bounce in traffic. Ward able to gather, puts it off the glass, and he'll go to the line. Pretty good hands by Ward to gather a tough pass in all kinds of traffic. It was a tough pass into a lot of traffic. Ward somehow comes up with it. And on the other end, just being able to get to the basket, it's, it's been an issue if you're giving up dribble drive opportunities. It's a higher percentage shot. Tom Izzo's well aware of the fact that his team is defending blocking shots and really at a high level this early in the season. This team has beat up all year long. Their opponent's shooting 31.6%. Our colleague Dave Revson sent this out earlier on the Twitter.com. The number two team in field goal percentage defense is Cincinnati. They're holding their opponents to 38.3%, almost a 7% difference between number one and number two. And the issue for Tom Mizzo is he understands the potential of this team. So even though those numbers are great, he still sees room for improvement. And his job is not just to win the game. His job is to make sure every night out this team gets better. Ashes Winston. Wade, the skip to Langford in the corner for an open three. And Langford able to rattle his second three down. He's got eight. And Michigan State stretches the lead to 15. Well, with McQuaid, Langford, and Cassius Winston on the floor, I don't know if I'd go zone against that group. I mean, there's three guys there that can space the floor and knock down shots. And obviously, Nick Ward in the middle. I mean, he's just a post-up sheet. Taken away by Langford. Langford accelerating. Oh, the Euro step to the rim. And Langford makes it 42-25. Quick attack the other way. Dubose waiting for traffic to clear the lay-in. Here's McQuaid. The 
getting up and running. Winston, the entry to Ward. Ward, tough turnaround. That falls, and Ward now into double figures with 10. A perfect four for four from the floor. But I like that HBO, HBU. HBO. Who's playing again? <laughs> I like that HBU gets a, it gets a, you know, a rebound or even after a made basket, looks to get out and run. Oh, oh. That's how they're going to be able to stay in this game or at least make it a basketball game. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Kenny Coyne's with the foul. McKenzie mm -hmm. mm -hmm. will. Ward checks out, head to the line. 44-27 Michigan State. And Philip McKenzie, one of those freshmen who came in right away and found the hurricane when he got there. Out of Nassau in the Bahamas by way of Concord, North Carolina. The ball off the rim, tipped around. Schilling battling for it and out of bounds. It'll go to Michigan State. David Carraher hustling for it as well into the Michigan State bench. A little extra coaching moment for Tom Izzo Free on the sideline. Carraher slams into the bench. I'll take this opportunity with my team over here to give him a few words of advice. Words of encouragement, Kevin. Wins the jump over to Winston. Winston drives underneath. Schilling has it rejected by DuBose, but a foul. It's a Michigan State team that does a really good job of breaking down the zone. Well, I got to see quite a bit of it so far, but Joshua Langford's one of those guys who could be a zone killer. He spaces the floor. I'd say he might be one of the most important guys on this team. What he can do in terms of sustaining balance on the floor with his three-point shooting. About this Michigan State program and that man Tom Izzo over the years. Four games from now, we'll be back in conference play in the Big Ten. And you know we're going to have a lot more moments to come in this young basketball season. Gavin Schilling on his way to the free throw line. One more to come for Schilling, who has six points off the bench tonight. I hope people out there realize how important job security is to building the program and sustaining the program over time. See, so many high-level programs struggle year in, year out. Every five years, there's a new coach. Well, how do you expect anything other than that? Tom Izzo's been able to create culture, maintain culture, bring guys in that fit that culture and his style, and that's why they're so sustainably good. Yeah, pretty stable situation here I mean, in East is, Lansing. This is usually where I say something stupid, like every coaching contract should be for 20 years. Like, <laughs> and it's, you know what I mean? Like, where you take it just that one step too far? Yeah, that's usually what I do. That's usually how things go. But there's something to that. If you know that you're going to be here and your job is not just to make the team better tomorrow or better the next day, it's about how can I make this program better 20 years from now? It changes how you approach every day. Bridges with another three in the corner. How about three threes? for Bridges and 16 first half points. Say, I also say that I think that's how you can serve the interest of the kids that much better too. If you're not just interested in about winning right away, but if you're about doing it the right way, about investing in the kids, making them better, not just in what they're doing on the floor, but off the court as well. Bridges with the step back two. Oh my goodness, is he feeling it right now? Miles Bridges hitting from inside, hitting from outside, hitting fadeaways. He's got the entire repertoire working tonight. I think those are the things that you like to see more of. Uh, he's got that in him, but he, I don't want to say he's not passive in any way. He's seen another illegal screen. He's, in no way is he passive. I think he's just patient. Uh, but he's a guy that could be even more aggressive, more assertive, and I think at some point, he's got to be your alpha. Dog. You don't really have it on this team. I think Tum Tum Naren is as close to it, but I think you need this guy who, who's the best player in the Big Ten to emerge as that guy, that go-to guy that if you need a bucket, if you need a stop, it's going to come from him first. Well, this first half is going to make Tom Izzo happy from his standpoint because one of the things he said today is we got to get him going. He's 100% healthy now. We've got to get him going offensively. What's happened to this first half? Bonds to the other end, and Braxton Bonds elevating to put it down. You think he's going to...
gonna be happy with his first half? Well, he's gonna be happy from just that one individual standpoint that, of getting Miles Bridges going. That little sliver, that sliver, that little sliver of the trivial pursuit pie. Is, yes, he's gonna yes. be happy about that. That's look. one area that he'll be happy with. Goins off the no look for Bridges gets the jumper to fall and gets Bridges an assist in the process. I think there's two things. Uh, obviously, I mean, you know better than I do, but I look at defensively just cleaning certain dribble drive activity up. If you can take that away. Then you're going to have to. You're going to give yourself that much better opportunities. Now, at the same time, I think on the other end, you've got to take better care of the basketball. Uh, you're going to have. You're going to go against greater length. You're going to have to go against changing defenses in the Big Ten. So you've got to make cleaner, crisp passes. Stay tuned. Analysis predictions more coming up on the State Farm halftime report. Dave Revson, who was already mentioned once in this broadcast, will be in the studio along with Sean Morris. It's in his contract. Got to mention him four times at a Four times of the game? Week. I'm sure he's doing something in between or post-game, big show, right? <laughs> Got to be. Gavin Schilling called for the foul, going the other way. Michigan State, 20 field goals, 16 assists on those 20 made field goals. Winston with nine assists in this first half. Doesn't it feel like off-the-ball fouls are just... It's just a regular occurrence? All the time. It feels like more. I don't have any statistics I, to back it, it up. Just, but. It really does seem like at, at some point you've got to figure it out. At some point you've got to figure out how the game's being called and, and play within the rules. It's, it's, it's not just play within the specific rules. It's play within the way the game is being called. It's like holding. In terms of uh, the NFL, you can call holding every single play, but you can't really be egregious about it. You have to learn how to play within the, the game as per, as per the calls, not just the rules. Schilling's third rebound after the foul on Nairn. Michigan State with a minute to go. Bridges inside with the hook, and Bridges now with 20. He's just one point away from tying his season high in points in the first half. He had 21 in the game against Rutgers. He's got 20 in the first half here tonight. I think those are the shots you want to seek out for. Those are easy, high-percentage shots that he's just going to be able to elevate. I'd like to see him use that right hand as he just did. Carraher in the corner. His three not going to go. Rebound tracked down by Bonds. Another offensive board for HBU, and Bonds going base. Baseline with a reverse won't go. Another offensive rebound and another. And Bond finally able to put it in. And a timeout taken by Michigan State. And it may have been because I said the words another offensive rebound and another offensive rebound. That's 15 offensive rebounds for HBU in the first half. Oh, when I was telling you just a couple minutes ago about a couple of things that Tom Bizzo made me frustrated with, uh, make that number three, offensive rebound. And that's just a collective effort. It means you have to stay in the play. You, you can't vacate the, the defensive play and start to leak out. I mean, there are more HBU bodies and too much standing around and watching for the guys in white. And you saw the reaction in the huddle with Coach Izzo in another teaching moment with his young team. And also leads to HBU winning the battle in the paint. There we'll walk it up for the final shot for Michigan State in this first half. Spartans are going to go into the locker room with a 20-plus point lead. But I'm pretty sure that Tom Izzo will find things to talk about. Here's Bridges. Dribble handoff to Winston with six remaining in the first half. Winston working inside, shoves it into the corner, back out to McQuaid. McQuaid with the shot up, won't go. Halftime here in East Lansing at the Breslin Center. Michigan State with a 54-33 lead at the break. 17 assists on 21 made field goals for the Spartans. Winston with 10 assists in the first half. After the break, we'll send it back to Dave Revson and Sean Morris in Chicago. They've got our halftime duties with the State Farm Halftime Report. Spartans up by 21. 
Tom Izzo happy with what he saw in the first half? I'd say yes and no. I think their shirts that they wear say, we talk, we listen. Well, I think Tom Izzo did some talking. And I think they're all going to listen. In particular, Jaron Jackson. Jaron Jackson's got to play five minutes. But I think he, he probably had to do some listening at halftime. Miles Bridges certainly did some talking on the court in that first half. He was really good. Well, he just got after it in a variety of ways. And I think they need to find these opportunities for him to get easy baskets. He started to develop that outside jumper even more. But where he's going to be at his best is when he can dominate somebody down low. If he can get himself into position, he needs some easy buckets by just elevating over top. Man. That's just going to make it that much easier for him throughout the course of a game. The youth movement tonight, Miles Bridges with 20 points, Nick Ward with 10, Langford with 10, Cassius Winston 10 assists tonight. He's just one away from tying his career high. Yeah, but it's the last one that I want to keep an eye on. I want to see how Jaron Jackson Jr. responds here in the second half after only playing five minutes in first. He just picked up his fourth foul. Six seconds in, picked up his fourth foul. Oh, that's how he's going to respond. <laughs> Four fouls on young Jaron Jackson. It's tough. It goes back to what I talked about, though. I mean, the amount of off-the-ball fouls. It, it's going to be a challenge to figure that out. And Ward with a foul. That'll be the second team foul and the second on Ward. So Gates will trigger. Bonds the entry to Carraher. To back out against Ward. Here's Hart. Freshman from Phoenix. Hart working against Jackson and a travel. The issue I have there is if you're going to call such little body contact on the defense, then you got to call that an offensive foul. I don't care what you say. That's displacement. You turn and you're trying to take the space that's already occupied by a defender. There's Ward curling around Hart and able to get the two. back up the floor for HBU. Carraher threw it off Hart's field. It's interesting to see the switching out around the perimeter, especially with a guy like Jaron Jackson, I mean, covering a guard. Jackson, good defense that time against Bonds with those four fouls. Long pass ahead to Jackson. Jackson running to the rim, and Jackson rejected on his way up. Ian DuBose elevating to throw the big man. And the other end, the rejection by Jackson. That really was a fantastic play at the rim. I mean, those are the plays where you have to make a really quick decision, and the quick decision is, do I, do I want to potentially get posterized, or do I want to try to make a highlight? And it happened to work out. But Jackson staying with the play, game comes back, gets one of his own. Hustled back down, got his third block of the night. HBU back to work. Carraher against Jackson. Steps back for a deep two. Winston the rebound, and now Winston looking to push. Bridges, the lob to Ward. Tough catch. Better finish for Nick Ward. Oh, just great presence of mind to come down with that basketball and not try to finish it off balance. I go back to Jackson, though. It's going to be so important for him to be on the floor as long as they want him on the floor and as much as they want him on the floor. He is going to have to learn how to play without fouling, regardless of, of what's being called. Such a key cog to what this team can do, and it adds such a different dimension for Michigan State. A bump on the way up the floor. Gates called for the foul. I would say especially when he's able to trail plays and knock down threes. I mean, it's a facet of his game that I don't think we see enough of at times, but I think partially because they have so many weapons. I think the better the competition, the more you're going to see Jared Jackson get three-point opportunities. It's just the way it goes. We saw a little bit of this about a week ago when they played in Southern Utah, and Jackson had some issues extending out to defend smaller posts like you're going to find with a Southern Utah or a Houston Baptist. Has that been an issue that you've seen today? He wasn't on the floor much in the first half to see any issue. Well, part of that is just being ahead of the play, learning how to gap, use your leg to just cover space. 
I mean, that's a that's a challenge that a lot of guys have. But it's something that NBA players finally learn how to do. They, they use their length to cover space and, and to take space away from a jump shooter potentially or a dribble driver. And for Jackson Jr., look, he's young. He's a guy who came into school. He was 17 years old when he got here. He's a young kid, and he's got a body and an athleticism that's already there, but he, he's still kind of coming into his own. So. He's going to learn how to play the game even better. He's one of those guys I talked about, an incredibly intelligent kid. Bridges now with 21, matching his season high. One more for a new season high. Had a chance to talk with Jared Jackson Sr. after the Southern Utah game a week ago. He's just, you know, 13 years in the NBA. He certainly has seen a lot of different things. He played at Georgetown. And he was so appreciative of Tom Izzo's coaching and yeah. teaching for his son. And I'm sure you hear that from moms and dads through the years with Coach Izzo. But he was just so appreciative and so much a believer in what Coach Izzo was going to be able to do to improve Jaron Jr.'s game. He was excited to see what was going to happen as this season unfolded. Yeah, it might be there. The real appreciation comes many years down the road. I mean, that's when you really know you did your job. <laughs> to the rim and the easy finish. I think the best coaches, the best people in my life are the ones that I, thank, I thanked once I grew up a little bit. And I think Tom Izzo is the kind of guy that really, as you grow, you're going to realize how much he really did for the development of not only your game, but also you as a person. And it's those habits that you learn uh, along the way here that are going to make you successful again in whatever you're doing. Goes to look for Bonds. Bonds not able to get that one down. Bridges has gotten a piece of that one. Winston on the push, and Winston traveled with it. Turnover for Michigan State. They're ninth. The things that really set Nick Ward up is being able to run in transition. It wasn't really a transition basket. More of a secondary. But the key is he ran down the floor, got himself into position, and held his position. Did not allow the defense to gain position back on him. And that's something that takes work. It's not like you just run down and get open. You've got to work to get open. That's where that much improved fitness is going to help him the most. McKenzie looking to carry her. Carraher back and down against Winston. The jumper falls for Carraher. Carraher with six points, but he's had a rough night. One for seven before that shot. Langford on the drive, rejected by Emili, and pushing the other way is DuBose. Oliver Lynch Daniels on the drive to the rim. Jackson able to change that shot, get the rebound, and draw the foul on Ian DuBose. Jackson did a good job of changing the shot, altering the shot, but didn't foul. Again, use space and just gap. Use to let his length do the job. I think that's something you're going to learn. And the only way to learn it is to play at this level. You don't exactly play AAU basketball in high school, be one of the best players in the country, and then figure out how to play at this level. No, you need to get here. That's why practices are important. Tom Izzo said we, we did, did some two-a-days, not to beat him up, but to just work through some issues. It's been a good couple of minutes for Jaron Jackson. He's done things and been productive without picking up that extra foul. Bridges gets the two. And Miles Bridges continuing his fine night. He has 24. You can just see that there's such a concern with Miles Bridges being able to get to the basket and get into the paint that you have to give him space. Well, he's going to knock jump shots the way he's to knock him down the way he's doing it now. It's going to be long, long season for Big Ten opponents. Carraher unable to connect on that one as he got to the rim. Dubose off another offensive rebound. Gets into the rim, gets the bucket, and gets a chance at a three-point play. <laughs> Monday night when you come to BTN, you get so much stuff. You get John Crispin, you get the number two team of the country. You also have BTN Trivia Night. Fabulous prizes will not be yours. Two of those. Featuring interviews with coaches and breakdowns of every class. The Big Ten Football and Beyond Signing Day Special Wednesday 9 a.m. Eastern right here on BTN and streaming live on BTN to go. Not a dog, man. That's a lot of time. It's a lot of time, and that probably means with the early signing day now in college football, mm -hmm. that means we have two of those shows because there's the regular signing day as well. Yeah. That's, that's 14 of, hours then. But what that is, that's a lot of preparation. I, I give Michael Hall a lot of credit, man. That, that's a crazy amount of prep yeah. for that show. You're studying guys who have not played a down of college athletics yet and trying to break down with the crew in the studio how they're going to fit into a college program maybe two or three years down the line. I mean, I know you spent weeks to get ready for this game alone. I can't imagine what Michael Hall is. Well, I mean, it's more
more of a mental preparation having to work with you. Emotional therapy, I think is what they call it. Yep. For who? Me? <laughs> That's after you work with me. Okay. Mitch Daniels with 13 to shoot around the screen from Carriher. Underneath the lob taken away. Schilling able to pick up the loose ball. And Nairn will push. Tum Tum there, the kick into the corner. McQuaid, wide open three. Schilling pokes the rebound in the air. Bridges tipping that one out of bounds, out of the hands of McKenzie. All right, we teased it before the break, and it's time for trivia night. Tom Izzo, you can tell, is really geared up for this question. Can you name the longest tenured head coaches in Division I basketball? You're not asking me. I am. I'm, you're the literally the only other person I would ask this question because I know that you know the answer. Tom Izzo, by the way, was yes. one of the longest tenured coaches. I think I know number six and number seven. I think they're both coaching in this game. So are we going to we're going to reveal this? Ron Cottrell, 27th season at HBU. Help this team go from the NAIA all the way to the Division One level. That's a fantastic run. That is an absolute fantastic run. 27 years, and to handle that tr uh, that transition, it, it's kind of a reward, right? To be able to take that, well, kind of, it certainly is. Take that team from NAIA, NAIA to Division One. DuBose showing something, and Jackson coming back to get the rejection. What a play by Jackson. Schilling on the other end is fouled by Braxton Bonds. But how about the hustle from the freshman as Jackson celebrates with Matt McQuaid, and he should. What a hustle play by the young freshman to get down and throw up the block. You're not defined by the mistakes that you make. You're defined by how you respond to them, and right there, uh, I'm going to define him by the effort he gave to get back and make that play, and that's exactly why Tom Izzo's dapping him up a little bit. Ten blocks tonight, six games already, with ten total blocks or more. He got himself in a bad position. It was the turnover, but he got right up and came back to take this away again. Also, using his length to avoid picking up that fifth foul. He's played really smart for the yeah. last four minutes after getting that fourth foul six seconds into the second half. And I also feel like it's a good thing to keep him in the game because if you take him out, there's no rhythm whatsoever. And also, you want to see whether he can play this way. Can you trust him on the floor with foul trouble? That's a good lesson to learn both for the player and the coach. Well, for the coach, everything you're learning about these players is who you can trust. Who you can trust to make stops, who you can trust to, to make passes and make big plays. Oh, Schilling flying in to get the rebound, and then a foul is there and pulls it out of traffic. I make that point because coaches play the guys that they trust. That's the bottom line. And so far, I think you can trust that the lineup on this floor is going to get after it a little bit. There's definitely some work happening here with Schilling, with Nairn. I don't think since the minute he arrived on campus, anyone has ever questioned the leadership or enthusiasm of Tum Tum Nairn. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you watch a shooter, and we watch, we get the opportunity to watch these every time we're here. I'm, I'm, he is intense but smiling the entire shoot around and he's like another Tom Izzo on the floor from the standpoint of getting guys in the right spot. His energy's there. Oh. He's also a good locker room leader. He's done a lot in the community. I don't think there's anybody out there within this community that can say, ah, no, Tom Tum hasn't done that much for us. No way. He's very involved. He's been here for four. It seems like he's been here forever and just leading this program in every sense of the way. It's hard to do when you're not the best player on the floor to still be the leader. Hey, that's a challenge. Jackson driving to the rim. He's fouled by Tim Miles. They'll give it to Ian DuBose instead of Miles. Both in the area. DuBose picks up the foul. 17 foul on HBU. So that means the Spartans will be shooting the rest of the way. Thing we've learned early about Jared Jackson is that he is going to hit free throws as we answer our BTN trivia question. Ron Cottrell, sixth among longest tenured head coaches. Jim Beheim and Mike Krzyzewski, one and two on the list. I mean, one and two has been coaching more than I've been alive, so I'd say that's a long time. 
If I could do this for half as long as Jim Boeheim <laughs> has been coaching, I'm, I'm doing all right. Gates, the deep three. Jackson, the rebound. Another foul. That's Tim Miles who picks up the foul. And for Miles, that's number four. That's a one one. Will be shot on the other end of the floor. I still think, regardless of what happens in the next 13 12, I still think you've got to feel good about the response from Jaron Jackson Jr. He picked up that foul within, what, the first 20 seconds of the second Six half? Seconds in. Six seconds. Six oh, seconds. Took the over on that one. Price is right rules. I lost. Yes, you did. I bid one dollar. Free throw won't go. You know what? I can't stand when they do that. That one drives me nuts. Someone tries to be accurate and you come out with a dollar. That's weak. Be a strategy. It's all strategy. You gotta go for the extra hundred or whatever you get by getting that close, right? A thousand. I want to go spin the wheel. Uh, yeah, only way you're spinning the wheel is if you get on stage. I spent a lot of time in my life thinking about this. This date much. Bonds on the drive inside. Jackson had a piece of it that still went in. I'm not that happy with mediocrity, Kevin. I have to be. <laughs> Timeout called by Michigan State. And the Spartans enjoying a 30-point lead at home over HBU. Magic outside and a little magic inside in the Breslin Center tonight with Michigan State up 69-39. Miles Bridges with a season-high 24 points in 21 minutes tonight. Cassius Winston triggering into Bridges. Langford with a three. Rattles off. There's Jackson soaring in to get the rebound. That won't go. Ball loose. Ward's got it. Ward going to get tied up under there, and it'll stay with Michigan State. Say, watching Miles Bridges play, nothing he does comes outside of the offense. It doesn't come outside of the flow of the game. And I think at times he's going to have to find a way to assert himself a little bit more. It doesn't mean he's not aggressive. It doesn't mean he's passive. He said that earlier this season. He said, I'm not going to be passive again. I don't think he's really passive. I just think he's patient. I think he's patient. He understands he's got a very well-balanced team, so he's not going to be overly aggressive. Now, there's going to be times where he's got to seek out the opportunities, not just seek out the shot, but seek out the opportunities. Bridges seeking out someone to inbound to there. Langford is the recipient. Ward back out to Langford. Langford, tough pull up, left it short, and the rebound cleared by Tim Miles. HBU on the run. Nice bounce ahead and the two hand stuff for Philip McKenzie. Well, that's usually what Michigan State does well, is take a, a stop on one end and turn it into a transition basket on the other. Langford off the skip into the paint. Loader short, Miles the board. Bonds again on the push. Langford got a deflection. Carraher, 18 to shoot. Bonds now back out to reset. Jalen Gates. Carraher looking for room on the baseline and a turnover. Jackson got in his way and he turned it over. Here comes Winston end to end and Winston with a nifty layup. He's got five. Uh, and that's a part of his game I I'd like to see continue to evolve. And he passes the ball so well that you you've got to kind of keep an eye on his teammates when he's got the ball in transition because you know he can give it up and he finds teammates so well. He there's going to be opportunities for him to score. Put three from Jalen Gates. Out of bounds, and the turnover back to Michigan State. HBU being able to get a stop, get down the floor, throw one down. That's something you'll remember here in the Breslin Center and on the other end. That's what I'm saying, Cassius Winston. You can develop that part of the game. Look out. Another added weapon. Young Spartan fans very happy with what they've seen tonight. Michigan State with a 30-point lead. Jalen Gates. Jalen Gates and Will Gates Jr. Brothers on this HBU team. And for basketball fans of a certain vintage, i.e., you know, me, maybe even John Crispin. And that's an open fact. Thanks to Jalen Gates for the work of the pressure. We'll remember Dad Will William Sr. If you watched the documentary Hoop Dreams, which was one of the best basketball documentaries ever done, and it was done in the early 90s, and it told the story of Will Gates Sr. and Arthur Agee, two guys in the Chicago area, and their goals of playing in the NBA, and 
Williams Sr. suffered a knee injury, played at Marquette, but he didn't really ever get back to where he was as a sophomore in high school. He's one of the best players in the entire country. And there's Gates, splits the two defenders, gets to the rim, and the follow falls for HBU. And, you know, Graham Couch, who's a terrific writer for the Lansing State Journal, did a Q&A this week with Will Gates Jr. about his dad and about that documentary. I thought it was interesting. Dad did not let Will Gates Jr. watch the documentary in its entirety until he got to the eighth grade. He said, I didn't want to saddle you with the injuries that I had. I wanted you to see me as what I was, and I didn't want you to worry about those as Gates hits the three and will go to the line for a chance at a four-point play. It's interesting, though, because I could go both ways with that because I, I can tell you that, that watching that it was very humbling. It was humbling at a time where I, I still not yet found humility. And it's something where, it, yes, it's a dose of reality of, of what can happen. No path is set in stone. Uh, not in this game, for sure. I think it's a good reminder, but I, I grew up with that in mind. Uh, two things. There are hoop dreams and Hoosiers. Yep. Uh, you know, one was the glorified version of what could happen. The other one was the reality. And, and somewhere in between, you, you hope you can make a career out of this. And... Well, Will started his high school career before they moved to Texas. Winston gets an open look for three. Can't get that one to go to rebound Bridges. He started at St. Joseph's High School, where his dad yep. played before they moved down to Texas. Began his career there. and. Talked a little bit about that in that story that Graham Couch did. Nice little read in the Sixth State Journal if you're so inclined. Jaron Jackson going to the line. Jaron Jackson has been terrific. You're, you're talking about almost 10 minutes with four fouls. And he hasn't come out of the game. And, I, and, I, and I've got to give credit to Tom Izzo for just letting him stay in the game. The second you take him out and put him back in, he's probably going to get another foul. You're allowing him to play with the, within the rhythm and flow of the game, and he's probably earning it a little, a little bit of leash here. I think Jaron Jackson, it's a great teaching, teaching and coaching point to be able to say, hey, look, this is where you're picking up your fouls. When you're a step behind the play, when you're trailing the play defensively, you're not in position early, that's when you pick up your fouls. So if you want to be on the floor for 30 minutes when we need you on the floor, like for that, block number five for Jaron Jackson tonight. Block number 22 in the last four games as Bridges fouled on his way to the bucket by Tim Miles, and that'll be the end of the night for Miles. Bridges head to the free throw line after Jackson's block on the other end. I think at first, Tim Miles forgot that he had four fouls. He's getting all hyped up about not letting Miles Bridges kiss the rim or something in his face. And <laughs> smiling on the bench, other than from Tim Miles, the grad transfer from Cal State Fullerton. His night is done. It was a good, it was a good foul. Don't get me wrong. I would have got the heck out of the way, but but look at me. <laughs> Just good on both free throws now. 26 for Miles Bridges. Best game of the year so far. And there will be more like that as this season goes along. Bose enters it to Hart. Hart working against Wool. Hart trying to get some space against Wool. Couldn't find any. And Bridges picks up a loose ball. Now Nairn on the push to Winston. Winston. Through the baseline, Bridges wide open look for three, and he hits it again. 29 for Miles Bridges. Jaron Jackson knew that thing was going in. He didn't turn around. He just started talking to the fans in the crowd, saying, Cash, might have said something different. You've never been the best rip lip reader. <laughs> Jackson grabs the rebound off the missed. The lob ahead to Ward and the alley -oop from Winston to Ward. 2-47 Michigan State and 12 assists now for Cassius Winston and a timeout from HBU. This crowd's finally getting into it. Not 
because the game is tight and starting to pull away. It's because this Michigan State team is starting to do what we expect them to do, and that's dominate the basketball game. When you get out in transition, this Michigan State team is so hard to stop, and that transition ultimately starts with defensive stops. When they get defensive stops, when they get rebounds or steals, it often leads to an easy bucket on the other end. Pretty cool way to get your career high assist there on that alley oop from Winston. This is assist number 12, a new career high. Yeah, that's not bad considering he had 10 at the half. I mean, but you look at the numbers for this team, the way they're sharing the basketball, they share the basketball so well because of the balance. You're not going to have a lot of assists on, on all your made baskets. I mean, I don't know where they're at right now. At one point, it was 22 assists, 27 made field goals. 25 to 30. 25 to 30. There you go. Someone's got updated stats. I just go with whatever paper came to me last time out. <laughs> Looks like they had three assists. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was first half. <laughs> Two minutes left. Ray Gates Jr. On the attack for HBU. Blocked again by Jackson. Ball kept alive. Tillman able to chase it down for Michigan State. And Winston looking for more. Winston, he'll pull up the three ball. So the 40th block for Jaron Jackson turns into a three for the nation's three-point leader, Cassius Winston. I just want to go back to that. You, you talk about the, the assists, the made baskets. It all goes back to that balance, and that's going to be an illegal screen. Edward Hart screening off Miles Bridges, who stopped, dropped, and rolled a little bit, and it goes the other way. You said something in our open. We talked about pick your poison with this lineup, and I said, well, it's not just the starting lineup, but it's also the guys that come off the bench, and that's going to be what lends itself to sharing the basketball well, getting high percentage shots. Yes, it's getting defense, turning it into an easy opportunity on the offensive end, but you, do, you can't just go all at Cassius Winston. You can't go all at Miles Bridges. There's so much balance on the floor. To your point, 11 players average eight minutes or more per game for Michigan State this year. There's just waves of players that roll off the Spartan bench. Tie-up is called. Possession error gives it to HBU. And a timeout here in East Lansing with 7.44 to play all Michigan State. Oh, and I love a transition three. Not just because it's a bad shot that I took a lot of, but it's some of the best shots you're going to get. Lead later tonight when the action ends. The big show takes over. Highlights from around the conference. Post-game reaction straight from the arena. And in-depth expert analysis. The big show tonight, 10 Eastern, right here on BTN. Talk tonight about a variety of things. One thing we've talked a lot about is Jaron Jackson. He got his fourth foul six seconds into the second half. He's played the entirety of the second half yeah. since. And with four fouls in the second half, four points, four rebounds, and four blocked shots. Production without picking up that fifth foul. He's learned a lot tonight. Oh, I think he's learned a lot. I think Tom Bizzo and his staff has learned a lot about him. He's also covering smaller players who are looking to get to the rim. There's Gates. Out to his brother Jalen Gates. The three won't go with a tip jam follow for Ian DuBose. That is offensive rebound number 21 tonight for HBU. Oh, Cash is Winston new right away, too. <laughs> Just put his hands up. Like, what happened? It's not just going and finding a body. Defensively, you should know where the body is already. And that's going to be the fifth foul on Jaron Jackson. It happens away from the ball. Tom Izzo can't believe that one got called. Surprised and away from the ball foul? <laughs> I swear, 99% of fouls, I'm going to say something ridiculous and put a crazy number on it, are, are off the ball fouls. I'm sure there's statistics on that. There's a metric for everything. I appreciate you jumping in there first to let us know you're going to say something crazy and then follow it up. It's true. It just seems like so many fouls are being called off the ball. And I understand cleaning the game up, but it takes so much of the rhythm and the flow out of the game. And I, I'm, I'm not even saying that it's a wrong call or a bad call. It just seems like if you want to make the game better, you have to create more flow. And blowing the whistle every time is not a way to do it. Four points, eight rebounds, six blocks as Jackson fouls out for the second time this season. Bonds to work. And 
review of Barry Bonds hands it off to Jalen Gates and Gates hits the two. Jalen Gates is a nice little future for this HBU team. He's got 17 today. I like the elevation on the jump shot. Not a lot of guys look to shoot a jump shot. They either shoot an open three or try to get to the rim for another driving kick opportunity. He's actually seeking out jump shot opportunities. Tillman bumped by Edward Hart. That's four on Hart. Joshua Langford does this really well for this Michigan State team. Seeks out a jump shot opportunity. And I know to some that may not be a high percentage shot. But you can also spend 30 seconds and get nothing. I'm clearly biased, too. <laughs> Toward the shooter. More for Xavier Tillman. I would coach the streakiest teams known to man. We'd either win 100 to 99 or lose 99 to nothing. <laughs> John Crispin's team looking for a job. For There's my resume <laughs> from three in the first five minutes on route to a 99 nothing loss. Crispin was unapologetic at the end. I thought we played great. <laughs> Pour it in for Tillman. Hey man, it's Miss Make Basketball. It's all those other cliches. You know, we've talked a lot about Bridges and what Jackson was able to do, but it's been a quiet 20 points on a perfect 9-for-9 nine nine shooting for Nick Ward tonight. <laughs> no. I, mean, I think that's how it goes, though. When, when you have such a balanced attack and you let things come your way, if you seal the way he has done throughout the course of this game, you're going to get easy opportunities, and you're going to shoot high-percentage shots. There's Langford looking baseline. The floater falls, and a chance at a three-point play. See Joshua Langford get into it a little bit. Obviously, it's not game deciding time right now, but he hasn't really gotten too much into the flow of this game. And he's one of those guys in transition. He runs the floor, runs the wings well, and they're always looking ahead. Langford's got 13. No turnovers in his 22 minutes on the floor tonight. Either. This has been a heavy pressure team that Michigan State has faced tonight. Uh, it hasn't been a ton of the turnovers, but if you look at the turnovers that they have, they haven't been pressure forced. They've just been careless. And I think those are the ones that, regardless, whether you have five or 20, you still want to clean those up. It's Daniels in the corner, splashes down the three. His fourth main three of the year. True freshman who played at Oak Hill Academy in Virginia. Chapel Hill, North Carolina. They recruited North Carolina well in this offseason, did HBU. Well, players that have seen action tonight that all hail from North Carolina as Bridges now with 31, and he's closing in on a career high. Bridges, 33, the best game he's had. He had it against Purdue a year ago. Got a shot at that, still with 5'10 to go. And Nairn with a steal. Here's Bridges, and a foul, and Bridges is going to have a chance to get a tie for that career high at the line. Miles Bridges' game has just changed. The, the fact that he's able to seek out a, a jump, it's going to force you to close out harder, which is going to open up opportunities for him just to blow by and throw something down in somebody else's face. First things Tom Izzo told us today at shoot around. He said, Well, Miles Bridges is 100% healthy now, and we need to get his offensive game going. That's one thing I want to work on. I want to see his offensive game get going. Yeah, it's going. Yeah. I'd say that mission has been accomplished tonight as Miles Bridges ties his career high with 33. I think the interesting thing about Miles Bridges, too, it's not as if his game has evolved, it's just that it's improved in every way. You hear the Spartan faithful here appreciate it. Shoot, they better appreciate him. He came back. I appreciate him. 33 points, six rebounds, five assists, one turnover, and a very effective 29 minutes for Miles Bridges, the foul on there. <laughs> Just read those stats and said very effective. <laughs> yes, 29 minutes. That's pretty effective. It's a video game effective stats. into heart. And to shoot for HBU, a whistle and a foul on Ben Carter. 
Coming up next, the Hoops doubleheader will roll on. The Hoosiers take on Fort Wayne. The action tipping off next right here on BTN, streaming live on BTN to go and Fox Sports Go. And I think we remember what happened last year as Nick Ward gets a little coaching as he leaves with 20 points and six rebounds. Indiana upset a year ago in Fort Wayne before a packed house that was a lot of Hoosier fans yep. in Fort Wayne. One of the more exciting games we had on BTN all season last year. See if they can match that excitement this time, though, at Assembly Hall. Langford looking for room on the baseline, bumped by Gates. <laughs> Talked a lot about the performance of Miles Bridges tonight. I'm not Juwan Morgan in the overtime win against Notre Dame. And all of a sudden, this Indiana team looks like they've figured some stuff out. Well, they figured some stuff out with a really tough schedule, too. Right? And they've been tested. Right? If you look at that schedule, that, that's a brutal way to start the season and, and start your tenure if you're Archie Miller. I mean, you inherit a tough schedule and you're trying to build some sort of confidence and some culture, chemistry amongst the players. That ain't easy. But I, mean, I think that's what's expected if you're the Hoosiers. I mean, you're expected to take on the best. Truthfully, you're expected to beat the best. Maybe not in the first year of a new head coach, but a guy like Jawan Morgan is going to be a tough matchup for Big Ten opponents. He, he really is. Not sure whether you cover him with a four, with, with a three. He does. He does a great job posting up, but also he's a very good passer. And he played the point guard spot two years ago when he got on campus when they needed somebody to be able to bring the ball up. He goes to the rim. Called Schilling rather than McQuaid in front there. It'll be McQuaid who gets called for the foul. I think players like Jawan Morgan are those guys that if you see them in high school, I don't care what you need, you need a guy like that. A good teammate, a versatile player, can, can, can fill many different holes on the team. Shares the basketball well, great length, can defend one through four. My kind of guy. Spartans about to win their 10th straight, John. They have won nine in a row, averaging the average margin of victory, almost 20 points per game. And this will certainly not hurt that tonight. 95-58. Yeah, right not now. to be a stick run. You're still going to find things that you can improve upon. That you really will. I, mean, I think the effort's there, the energy's there, but there's certain things that Tom Mizzou and his staff are going to look at and say, hey, here's where we can clean this up. If we take these 10 possessions where they were able to get to the basket away or these 10 possessions where they were able to get offensive rebounds and second chance points, it, it's not 95-58, it's 95-35. And I think that's what you're looking for if you are a championship caliber team. You're not looking for okay. You're not looking for a big win. You're looking for absolute dominance and perfection. And no point at rebounding. They're tied in the rebounding battle right now. But the offensive rebounds, HBU's out, rebounded them 21 to 8 on the offensive yes. glass. Now, a lot of that's the fact that HBU's shooting 31% from the floor, a lot of missed opportunities, and Michigan State's at 65%. Right now. It's, it's also something that Tom Izzo talked about. You know, we, we've got to play the game, not the jersey, you know, the game of the jersey. And there's truth in that, but there's also truth in the fact that it's impossible as a kid not to get up for Duke, not to get up for Purdue or Indiana and possibly not have the same sense of urgency against HBU. It's impossible. It's, it's human. It's part of the challenge of being a coach. He goes with one to shoot. The three not going to go. Offensive rebound, McKenzie. To the point we were just making, McKenzie with the offensive rebound, and a foul will send Philip McKenzie to the line after the timeout. 3.29 remaining in this one. Tom Izzo's troops about to get their 11th win of the year. Kevin Kugler, John Crispin back at the Breslin Center. Some Big Ten news and notes. You and I were there on yep. Saturday for that Rutgers game on BTN when they knocked off 15th-ranked Seton Hall. That awesome. was an unbelievable awesome. atmosphere. We talked earlier about Jawan Morgan, two teams in the top 25, Michigan State and Purdue. But that top note with yeah. Rutgers and Seton Hall, Coach peichel has got something going yeah. at Rutgers. That's a team by February and March, assuming health, you're not going to want to see that team. Certainly not at the rack. If he gets that going, oh, that's man. a hard place to play. I'll tell you, that place got loud. They were into it. And I think what brought the best out of that team was the fight from Seton Hall. I mean, they really were physically and emotionally getting after it. 
And I think that actually brought the best out of Rutgers. They felt it for once as if they mattered. Uh, and that's that's tough. When, when you've been in the basement for so long since you came into this conference, it, it's hard to find the reason to fight. And I think they found it. They found that they can win. Now that, that they've, they've not just scratched the surface, they've actually breached the surface. Uh, I think this is a team that's going to beat a lot of people. You know who's happy he doesn't have to go back out there? Tom Izzo oh, heck Michigan yeah. State. Heck he had yeah. a lot of good things to say about that Rutgers team when they got done playing them in the first conference weekend because Rutgers defended the heck out of his team. And he was very happy to get out of there with a win. We were talking yeah. about that with him today at shoot-around. And nobody on Michigan State is sad that they don't have to go back to the Rutgers. This Look, year. the best defensive teams, I always say this, the best defensive teams don't just stop you and stop a certain action that you want to do. They just make you uncomfortable for 40 minutes. And I think that's what this Rutgers team has done. And it's, and it's doing it in a way that it takes you out of what you want to do. It takes certain passes away. And it forces you to make shots that you may not want to take. And I think that's what Rutgers did really well against Seton Hall. They, they took the balance away from Seton Hall. They took the balance and the easy baskets away from, from Michigan State. They took transition away. I think that's what makes them so good. They've just made opponents uncomfortable. Cassius Winston will sit down. 10 points, 12 assists tonight in his 26 minutes. Steven Osuji on the floor for the first time for HBU. Teams clearing off some of the benches. The whistle and the foul is going to be called on Joshua Langford. All right, John's keys to a Michigan State Final Four run. Well, first off, make that man happy and maintain a sense of urgency. Play every team as if a Duke or Indiana. Also, they got to find consistency from the perimeter. That's going to help them in terms of that balance. And I tell you, it's a team. I, I look at that last one. I'm going I'm to jump ahead. You got to maintain that defensive mindset. That's something that makes this team great. Also, leads to easy buckets in transition. But the last one is one of the most important ones to me because I think that's how you win close games down the stretch. Keep Miles angry. When Miles Bridges is fired up, he is unstoppable. And if he has continued to be challenged and pushed to be the, the best player in college basketball, I think that's when he's going to shine the most, and that's when this team's going to thrive the most. Connor George on the floor for the first time tonight. A whistle and an offensive foul. Schilling. I told you, 99 out of 100 fouls are, are off-the-ball fouls, right? Some of the notable non-conference games, and Tom Izzo's not afraid to test his team, certainly not this year. The Duke loss, the ball win, UConn win, North Carolina, Notre Dame. Look, I, I would love to see them play Duke ten times in the year, and I would bet they win eight of them. I just think that was a tough time to play against that Duke team. But they threw a zone at you. For, for 40 minutes, it was zone, and it's a Michigan State team that hadn't yet figured out how to share the basketball play against the zone. So they still scored. Zone Saturday against Oakland. I tell you, they, they still scored, but it's it's a different team today. We'll look at it. Little basket. Xavier Tillman going to the free throw line. 2.17 to go in this one. So for Michigan State, Long Beach State comes in on Thursday to take a few days off for Christmas. Then Cleveland State on BTN on the 29th of December. Savannah State on New Year's Eve. I'll be here for both of them. And then Maryland to start off conference play. <laughs> Jump right back into the deep end of the pool with Maryland on the road at Ohio State and then three straight at home. Rutgers coming here, Michigan and Indiana to follow. But that's why there needs to be sense of urgency in these games because you have to take a step forward. Every time you're out on the floor, you've got to take a step forward, especially if you're a team that has the expectations that this team has, and that's Final Four or bust. There's no way around that. You can't say that, I don't know, we're not there yet. I mean, so agree. Potential for this team is, is really limitless. But with potential and expectation also comes pressure. And how you handle that pressure will be determined. It will be a determining factor of whether you can actually do what you need to do. The ground and controlled by HBU. Looking to get to the rim. Osushi can't get that one to fall. And the rebound for McQuay. It's funny how sick these fans are. They just want to see 100 points. What, are they giving out free tacos? McQuay delivers.
First time over the century mark since the home opener against MBSU to start off the 2016 season. Look, if you're in a Laker game and then they're giving out Del Taco after the game, I get it. You just need to see a honey bun on the board here. And Matt McQuaid gives it to him. Give the people what they want. It's the key to life. I don't know. I look. Maybe it's maybe it's a Big Mac. Whatever you're into around here. Help him out. For the people, Kevin. Taquan Jordan unable to connect on the free throws. McQuaid able to clear it. Aaron back to McQuaid. Wide open again. Delivers again. What do they get for 105? Maybe like a reduced concession on the way out. I mean, look, you're leaving anyway. You might as well reduce it. It's like giving away those hot dogs that are left on the rollers. What are you going to do with it? Throw them out? Here's John Crispin ready to save the day. The hot dog on the roller. I was actually surprised he made this one because it wasn't a rhythm shot when he took that pause and gathered himself. He made it a, a tougher shot than it needed to be, but he was probably wondering whether he should shoot it or not. Michael Saladin on the floor for HBU. Three won't go for Lynch Daniels. Rebound Schilling. Final 45 seconds of this one. All Michigan State tonight. George enters it to Tillman. Tillman with the hook, not going to go. McQuaid with the loose ball. Nairn going to hang on. Here's George on the penetration with the left hand. No, but a tip jam is there from Xavier Tillman. And a foul on Schilling with 18 seconds to go. A program high 14 blocks tonight. Get a little slam, Ken. Xavier Tillman, he has been active every minute he's in the game. I, I think it's a guy that doesn't get enough credit, not just for what he does in the game, but what he does to make Nick Ward even better in practice. The competition, I say it all the time, competition is the greatest motivator in sports, especially when it's your own team. from Jordan, 0 for 3 tonight. There's his first, shaking his head as that one drops down. Taekwon Jordan with his first point. And Michigan State can dribble this one out. But Kevin, I don't think there's any question how high level this Michigan State team is. The, the challenge is for Tom Izzo, his staff, and the, the team in general to continue to improve, particularly in these next few weeks when you're getting ready for Big Ten play. Use these practices as a way to perfect the things that you need to perfect. Michigan State shoots 64% from the floor, 10 of 20 from three in a 107-62 win over Houston Baptist. Coming up next, Fort Wayne taking on Indiana. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network. Our final score tonight, Michigan State 107, Houston Baptist 62. Good night from East Lansing. Now let's send it to our BTN studios, Dave Revson and Sean Morris.